Hello and welcome to my thought for the day. I hope yesterday for you was a wonderful day of worship and praise to the Lord, uh, giving him what he is due. And surely, as we consider again today, the wonder of the life of Jesus, we, our hearts are filled with gratitude for what Jesus did for us. And we are coming to the season, of course, and it's already there in our shops and it's, um, it's about to be there in the turning on of the lights. It's the Christmas season, which seems to have extended, um, not for religious reasons, but for commercial reasons, extended far beyond what it ought to have been. Um, a time to celebrate the greatest miracle that ever happened. And that was God becoming man. Impossible. God did the impossible when he became a man, when he became human. He set aside all his uh, divine abilities and experienced what it was like to walk, <laughs> to be tired, to, to be hungry. I've picked today, or the, the Lord has led me today, to um, a verse in Hebrews 4, uh, chapter uh, chapter 4 verse 15 Hebrews is an amazing book it com it compares the old covenant uh, given to Moses with the law and everything else and all the um, sacrificial system that was put in place in the Old Testament that is contrasted and compared with the new covenant that Jesus brought in and the superiority of the covenant that Jesus brought in is explained in Hebrews in great detail. It's a wonderful book to study. And as you study it, it opens your eyes to fully understand, well, to understand better. I don't think we'll ever fully understand it until we get to glory because it's such an amazing thing that um, Jesus brought in such, an, um, such, a, such a great system, a new system that made the old system obsolete. And it means that we, we, you and I, are not under law, but under grace. We're not obliged to keep all the laws. But of course, we have to remember that the laws were given because they reflect the nature of God. They reflect the way God can see that if we lived by those, those laws, we would have happier, more fulfilled and better lives. We would treat each other better. We would live better. We would be more fulfilled, more successful. But the old covenant required all the law to be kept in order for salvation to be given. And under the new covenant, Jesus kept it all for us and then died in our place. It's quite a different way of dealing with sin. But this, this little passage, let me read from verse 14. It says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus experienced what we experience. He experienced temptation. And he had to resist it. He experienced emotion. He was not ashamed to cry and to be moved to the depths of his heart when he saw a particular situation or when he met a particular person. Even though he knew he had the answer, his compassion, his emotion was still moved. And being emotional about things cannot be of itself sinful because Jesus didn't sin. So when he wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus, he did not sin. But the thing about emotions is that we must not be ruled by them. The love, love your neighbour, love your enemy, is not emotion. 
the command to love your enemy is a it is an act of the will the command the the injunction to forgive is not a matter of whether you feel like it or not it's got nothing to do with feelings it's a choice whether we follow Jesus or not we may have decided to follow Jesus because we were in a service when there was wonderful music and our feelings were stirred the preaching was fantastic and and we were cut to the heart we had emotional feelings of of sadness and repentance and on a surge of soulish response we came, we went forward and we gave our life to Jesus perhaps but we can't live our lives with God and with Jesus on our emotions it is an act of the will it's an act of the will today to say I'm following Jesus this is the start of a new day if I got it wrong yesterday I'm sorry but I'm going to do I'm going to follow even though I can't get it right all the time the only person who ever got it right all the time was Jesus Jesus heard what his father told him to do and he did it he lived a life of faith he was obedient to the father right up to the end and he did everything perfectly but he was tempted we have a high we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses he knows our weaknesses he experienced them he sympathizes with them but one in who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin so the next verse says let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need so whatever your need is today you can reproach Jesus you can approach the father through Jesus confidently because Jesus understands he understands what it's like to be human to be frustrated with the limitations of our human being and we can and it's the throne of grace it's i love that it's the throne of grace we approach the throne of grace not the throne of judgment not the awesome throne where god is enthroned and everyone is in so so such amazing awe you can't even look at him because he's so magnificent yes he is but he's sitting these days this is the era of grace the throne is a throne of grace not of judgment it's a throne of glory but the glory is in the gift of grace in the outpouring of love that comes from the father supremely expressed in the life of jesus where his love was shed abroad in in kindness and in goodness but also sometimes in sharp words to the people who he expected to know better who who re rejected him so as you consider the life of jesus and all the things that he did none of them were sinful not even when he cast out all those money lenders from the temple he did not sin when he did that he did what the father told him to do at every point but the po back to the point that i was really making and that is he understands he understands temptation he's been there he understands emotion he's been there he understands the need to apply will willpower to do the things you know you have to do he understands it all so we can be confident in coming to him today if we have a need just express it to him and he he's promised never to leave you he's there with you in the midst of your need god bless you